Hey everybody, I'm Isaac Duranlo, your host of Long Pines Tight Lines. I just wanted to preface this interview by saying that the opinions expressed in it are not necessarily my opinions or the opinions of Long Pines Tight Lines. I hope you enjoy it. Hey everybody, today I'm here with Kyle Blood, master track and guy. And I'm going to ask him a couple questions. I know one of the main tactics used to scout different areas is to spend time looking at maps and discovering the layouts of various territories. What are some specific signs you try to find to help you hone in on giant white tails before ever setting foot in the area? I like to look for uh, a combination of uh, some water, little streams or brooks, and ridges. Some areas you're going to hunt that are more flat and swampy, but typically around the brooks, you've got edge cover, green growth that transitions into hardwoods. They like to follow those corridors and stay in the cover. I want to I want to make sure there's some wet ground because when I scout for big bucks, I look for signpost rubs. Up in the north, it, it grows. The, they signpost on brown ash, which grows in those wetter areas. So whether it's bogs or streams, in a combination with the ridges, that's just my favorite places to hunt. After you select an area to scout in more depth, um, you kind of went over like the brown ash and stuff. Um, what are some more specific signs you start to look for? Uh, of course, I always look for tracks. Yep. You know, looking for tracks, travel corridors. Uh, typically, the big bucks, mature bucks, they're not they're not hanging around the does and the smaller deer. Bucks travel. All the bucks will travel certain areas. Not to say they never mix in with the does, but in a normal pattern, they're going to follow these little corridors. They typically cross through mountains in a certain place cross streams in certain places. So I'm looking for all those crossings. So if I follow a stream, I'll find that. I might find the signpost, but I also might find a crossing point. If I go up in a saddle in a notch in a ridge or a saddle, it might be a pinch point. Some people call it different things. I'll go up and look for those because they'll leave some sign through there too. So I'll look for rubs. There might not be a signpost up in the hardwoods, but I'll look for where they funnel through. A lot of times in those places, they'll make a scrape. So that's the type of sign I'm looking for. From your experience, other than during the run itself, what is the most productive time of year to scout? Well, most of my scouting is actually done during the season. Whether it's really the rut is not the best time yeah. to scout. The best time to really scout is pre-rut because they're getting moving, they're starting to lay down this sign. During the rut, they'll be Right. Off. Other than that, I'm either scouting as I hunt or in the spring. As soon as the snow gets off the ground, the woods looks just like it did in the fall. You'll see the scrape still. I mean, they'll be messed up a little from the being packed down. It'll be a little more subtle. You'll still find the rubs, will still look. They won't look as bright because the sun has faded them. But you can still find that fall sign in the spring. Once it greens up, forget it again until fall. In your opinion, what is the biggest misconception about what it takes to kill a big buck? Uh, the biggest misconception about killing a big buck really is, I think a lot of people think it's easier than it is, especially tracking. Uh, people, people tend to say, well, geez, you know, we, Get, some people get a big buck every year. So the misconception really is, is what it takes to do it. Especially tracking, people don't realize what you might go through in a day on a track, the miles you have to cover, the stuff you have to go through. So you, I tell people that game is really played in the mind. Yeah, you can be physically fit, but if you're mentally not prepared for it, you're not gonna be very successful. You gotta prepare your mind. It's really not that easy. Uh, what are some of the pros and cons to track the deer as opposed to picking a spot, sitting in a tree stand? Well, it's a, again, I think that's a mindset because some people are good sitters. If you've got a mindset where you're patient, 
and you're confident in your place to sit, you're going to sit there. It's a great way to hunt. I just never had any patience for it, so I always felt I had to go after them. And uh, the one thing about tracking is that makes it different is you're always learning something about a particular buck. If you're sitting in one spot, you knew he came through there, he's made that sign and you're going to sit there. But other than that, you don't know anything about that buck. You don't know where he travels. You don't know anything about him. When you follow that track, you'll learn about that, not only that buck, but other bucks. So that, that's the pro of it is, is you'll learn territory and you'll learn about the bucks in the area and where they travel. You just learn a whole bunch. Yeah, I've used trail cameras a little bit. I don't use them a lot because, quite frankly, a lot of the places I'd put them, I might not even get back in there for a year, or, you know, that fall. But I use them. Good. <laughs> but I use them uh, a little bit. I've tried it just to see what's passing through these signposts. I always put them on a signpost area, and I've got some pretty nice pictures over the years, but it. It doesn't tell you a time frame. A lot of people, they use trail cameras around farm country or rural and they, they see a buck are coming through a certain time. You might get a picture of a buck in the, in the big woods on a trail camera once or twice all fall. So it'll tell you what's around because you'll get a picture of it, but it's not going to tell you really any more about it than that. But they're fun. Yeah. Yeah, they're fun to use. I don't have just one. I really can't. I, there's so many great memories you make over the years, especially as many years as I've been hunting, that I can't really, I can't really narrow down just one because it's not only great experiences with, with myself, but it's, but it's helping clients get their big buck. You know, just, just lots of them. You know, to me, the hunt is not about killing the buck it's about the hunt the experience of that hunt so to me they're all great in one way or another yeah okay everybody you can check Kyle out um, on his website bigwoodsbucks.com bigwoods adventures tv and uh, numerous other publications that he is a part of how he's a guy that's very outdoors and uh, great guy thank you for doing this okay